Welcome to Creative Spaces, the podcast by Aurelex. We'll be talking to famous and not so famous people about their surrounding environment, how it influences the creative process. Hey everyone, this is Kevin Booth and Rob Winter. In today's episode of Creative Spaces Podcast, we are talking to Maddie Mullins. As frontman for the hit making hard rock band Memphis May Fire, a band raised up from the hardcore punk scene. Maddie is no stranger to plain spoken confrontations of the issues faced by the youth of today. His confessional and autobiographical lyrics have made him one of heavy music's most relatable figures. Maddie has two well received solo albums and an inspiring new single, No Hold On Me and he is one of contemporary Christian music's most dynamic voices. Maddie is joining us from his home studio located in Nashville, Tennessee. Maddie, how are you today? Doing awesome. Yeah, thanks for all the kind hey, words. Maddie. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. There's, um, I think we had to edit that down. <laughs> yeah. um, there's so much to say <laughs> seriously okay. um, well, thanks thanks for having me this is awesome yeah can you tell us a little bit about yourself and and you've probably told many interviewers how you got started in music but how did you get started in the recording and the production side of music yeah well um i was tired of traveling uh it's like you know i we are on tour so much that and by so much, I mean so much, you know, back in the earlier days, we were, we had a couple of different years where we had done 300 dates and, uh, I didn't want to be on tour all the time and be away from my wife and then go and spend two months in Vegas or LA or whatever, doing a record there and literally never have any time home. And so the idea of this room was about something that I can use, um, just, you know, um, something that is where I can feel creative and a space where I can, uh, right, but also something where I can get like really high quality vocals. So that was the idea behind this. And then I've been here for seven years and then just recently had, you know, started a new project with the turn a closet into a vocal booth that turned out really cool. I'm sure we'll talk about that later. Yeah. So yeah, let's talk about that space. So it started out with just the room you're in and you added a vocal booth recently. Yeah. So Rob came out and did an, the uh, analysis and basically there is a wall. I wish I could turn my camera to show you, but there is, you know, the wall that the door is on. Just on the other side of it, there's a walk-in closet that I was using to store boxes, you know, gear boxes or whatever. But it was decently wide and 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 long. And I was always like, man, this would be the greatest vocal booth room if I just put in a window between this wall and that wall, and then, you know, completely treated the closet. Um, it would just be a, it would be a great space for a perfectly dead vocal that you can do everything you want to in post. Right. And so, mm -hmm. um, that idea had, had that for a couple of years. And then finally, um, I contacted Rob. I was like, Hey, this is my idea. What do you think? He came out to the house, looked at it. He's like, yeah, this will work great. And, uh, and the rest is history. I, I did a lot of the work myself. I did all the treatment myself, but there was, um, we ended up running XLR through all the walls, um, and putting, uh, an XLR plate behind my desk here and an, another XLR plate in the booth so that there were to run cables every time we cut vocals and, you know, put in the window. We, I hired somebody to come and do that because it's kind of an extensive process. But, um, but yeah, man, I mean, it turned out really yeah. cool. If you, if you go to my Instagram, you can watch kind of a step-by-step -step video of it. Um, yeah, that was a great video. You can see all that. Yeah. There's yeah. Some pictures yeah, in there. It, it, it turned out really great, man. And, and we've already, you know, we've been using it daily and uh, it just sounds, sounds killer. And it's, it's very like the greatest thing about RLX too, in my opinion, obviously sound control is, is, is the, is the, the goal, the focus, right. But the way that it looks and even the way that it smells, I will say, um, <laughs> is creative. It feels creative. So like when I get into that space and it's just me in the booth and everything looks like this cool matrix like thing. And it just like, you know, it's, it, it does something for me. Uh, it makes me, makes me feel more creative and makes me feel more, confident i guess that's great yeah that's all part of it is creating the environment right so then you can be creative after that right yeah. and then it just gets out of the way so the uh, idea in your booth is really to have a really dead room so that you can uh, get the tight vocal sounds that you have those are layered vocals really tight and you create the ambient around it right Absolutely. so you can control yeah. it. i mean do everything in 
a lot of people are different. Some people like to track with hard hardwood floors beneath them. They like a little shine from the floors or whatever, um, natural reverb or whatever. But I want to be able to completely control an isolated vocal in post or whoever's uh, mixing or, you know, whatever, you know, um, I always prefer to give a completely dead vocal, um, especially because, you know, if you listen to the Memphis Mayfire stuff, you'll notice like a lot of the vocal heavily affected. There's, mm -hmm. you know, we've got low pass like on all these, you know, kind of like intertwining parts and there's a little bit of distortion on some screams and there's, you know, a lot of like mm -hmm. reverbs and delays like, um, you know, on the on the top line. And it does um, it needs to be dry. It needs to be dead. Yeah, if you have an ambient already recorded in there, you can't take it out and to yeah. do those things that could. Uh, yeah, it would be impossible or or really hard, right? Yeah, I to mean, just I would, I would go with impossible. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, what have you been recording? You mentioned you were working on some stuff recently. What have you been recording in that space? Yeah. So, I have two different projects. I have the band, and then I also do a CCM style solo project. Um, and both. We've been working on both, but mainly the new Memphis Mayfire record. We just signed a new record deal, um, and for for two more albums. And so, we're currently writing the first of the two. And, um, it's been so awesome to be like, all right, well, I'm going to go in. I just wrote this. I'm going to cut this vocal. And, uh, if it sticks, it sticks. If it doesn't it still sounds great. But if it does stick, then I have just completely controlled and edited everything, this vocal myself. And another thing I want to mention is the standard, uh, screen sharing app that comes with every Mac. Um, it, you can, you can share, uh, you know, your screen with another computer. You can also control your screen with another computer. So I, I, this is probably something that everybody knows and I didn't know, but I just figured this out. I've got a Mac mini in the studio that I run in here. I can bring my mm -hmm. laptop into the vocal booth and put it on a music stand and I can screen share and I can literally control. I, you don't even have to use logic remote. It has less options. Like I can, oh, really? wow. I can see a full screen of everything. I've got my console. I've got, you know, logic and everything right there on my laptop and I'm controlling it. I come back in here and it's just boom. It's right there. It's like ready to go. So it's insane. You know, uh, yeah. I, I can literally engineer the entire album myself if I wanted to. So that's cool. Well, that's great. You Very do a lot of that by yourself. It's probably, I is do it, now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it easier for you to do vocals on your own without an engineer? You just kind of in your own head in your own space and edit I, yourself I, I as you go. There's, there's pros and cons to both, you know, um, for me, a lot of times what I might be insecure about or what I might not love about a vocal take a producer will really like because it adds character. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I find that when I cut my own vocals, I'm usually going and going and going and going until I have like this perfect shiny take. And it's like, then I've lost emotion in it. If that makes sense, you know? Right. Um, You're right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I think that it's uh for the most part, I can do it. I'm getting better at just kind of trusting what I naturally do. Uh, but I have a couple different guys that I work with, a couple different engineers I work with that I really love that are very encouraging. Um, you know, but also they're not just like yes men. They uh, they help mm -hmm. and they coach and they guide and it's awesome. And so, yeah, I think there's pros and cons to both. I think the pro is that when there's no one around or when you can't get a hold of somebody or when schedules are busy or when there's a virus that's <laughs> taking over the world, right? Yeah. And you, people don't mm -hmm. want to go into your house. Uh, you can literally pop in and screen share and you can do everything yourself. So, yeah, it's great. Um, and and the gear side of things, I think I saw a picture you use Logic predominantly yeah. or yeah super simple setup in here you know i've got the apollo twin duo and i run logic um don't it, it, we're not tracking drums in here you know what i mean so it's like i don't mm -hmm. need anything too crazy uh but yeah i love i love the the apollo i love um using logic you know it's it's extremely user friendly and and has always been good to me and um for vocals i use a um I use a telefunken ak47 mk2 is the uh mark two is the mic that yeah I use, so Awesome. Yeah, that's that's a great mic, I think. Killer mic. Um, yeah. yeah, I've wanted to grab one of those for a while. Um, you can't go wrong with Telefunken or Neumann mics. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I use all Telefunken live. Uh, they're M80 capsules on my wireless. Um, it's it's mind-blowing what that capsule has done for my in-ear mix. Just, just using that capsule, just switching that out for my Sure capsule, I felt like for the first time ever, my vocal was separated to the point where I could really pick it out of the mix of craziness that's going on. It's like, if you can mm -hmm. imagine like a, a heavy metal mix and in ears and the, all the different parts going on and our guitar parts are all over the place, bass and drums are, you know, it's like, 
to be able to really feel like you can, you know, hear your vocal crystal clear amongst the chaos um, is a, it's a game changer, not only for the mix, but also for my voice, because I feel right. like I don't have to sing as hard to hear myself. Right. So yeah, that right. 80 capsule is incredible. Yeah. And then you're not injuring your voice, right? Right, right, right. But you know, who knows if we'll ever play live again. So yeah, don't, yeah. don't say that. <laughs> with with masks on, six feet apart. Yeah. yeah. I mean Slipknot I saw like a bluegrass hear. show. I saw like a bluegrass performance a couple <laughs> weeks ago. Um, and you know, no hatred towards bluegrass bluegrass. I love music in general. It's just great to see live music again. Yeah. But everybody was, you know, six feet away from each other on golf carts, actually. Oh, really? Um, that might be where we're headed. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that uh, shows that have been happening are cool. Um, I don't think it would be conducive with hard rock. You know what I mean? Right. Unless like everybody right. their windshield wipers on at the same time or like <laughs> yeah. flash their yeah. headlights. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, but yeah, yeah I was, mean, it could it could be a thing. We'll find out, I guess. Or drive-in movie theaters or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So much for the pit. So much for the mosh pit. <laughs> yeah. Guys, I wanted to ask um, a question. I'm sorry. You, you do you really do some cool stuff production wise with the vocals too. Just in a, just mm. in all, all the overall just the overall tracks and everything, but the vocals. Are there any specific types of um, is there any kind of software that you use for that, or that you want? You know, what's been really impressive, honestly, uh, as of late. The um, it is the. Let me pull it up really quick. It's a new Joey Sturgis plugin. You know the JST stuff. Are you mm -hmm. familiar with that? Yeah. It is this new vocal plugin, and I, I have it on the tip of my tongue, so I don't know why I'm spacing right now. <laughs> um, but it is the Howard Benson. Oh vocals. yes, it's exactly. his, yeah. So yeah. it's 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 his it's his thing that they did through JST. Okay. Um, and I mean, man, it is so much fun. Awesome. To play with, you know, I mean, you can do anything in that vocally in that one plugin literally i mean from start to finish take a dry vocal and use that one plugin compression everything like it's crazy wow um and i'm still pretty new to it but um yeah if it for anybody that hasn't checked out that specific you know gain reduction is a cool you know plugin as well mm -hmm. but that specific howard ben vocal plugin uh, from jst is next level cool. i've never used anything like it so cool awesome wow yeah. Let me go look for that now. Yeah, very, very cool. <laughs> do you uh, do you do any mixing in that room there um, um, for any yeah, of the for, stuff you've released? So I put out a solo album called Unstoppable. That entire album was tracked, mixed, and mastered in this room. Wow. Um, start, start to finish. And uh, sounds great. Yeah, I it sounds really great. I don't personally do any mixing. Um, but you know, like we have done that. We also, this is funny, but when is this podcast going to come out? Uh, uh, we're, I was going to say we're sh shooting for next week. Yeah. Okay. So by next week, um, there'll be a new thing that came out that was recorded and mixed and everything in here as well. So I live in a suburb called Spring Hill, Tennessee, <laughs> and, uh, mm -hmm. it's a suburb of Nashville, but we are a good bit South. We're about 40 minutes South of the city. And it's never been a cool place to live. It's, you know, like it's suburbia, you know, there's a McDonald's and a Walmart and whatever. Right. But, um, when my wife and I were living in Seattle, we moved here because we just searched my sister's zip code, just wanted to find something around her. She lived in Franklin. So we ended up here and, uh, there was nothing going on here. And then all of a sudden people started flooding in Nashville. Everyone's moving further South and Spring Hill is becoming a thing that's like kind of cool, but my friends and I, we go kayaking and we all like do funny stuff. We wear Crocs and socks and just like, it's like a whole thing. And so we made a mm -hmm. song about this life that we live in Spring Hill, Tennessee, and it's called South on 65. <laughs> and uh, it's like a country, like kind of like a country rock thing or whatever. It turned out so just hilarious and good that we, um, we shot a full blown music video for it. There's a little dive bar out here in Spring Hill called Froggy and Jeff Rose. Oh, wow. And, uh, we actually like shot all the live performance in the bar. Like we went kayaking on the duck river and shot a whole thing. And so that song <laughs> and video come out this Friday. And, uh, that was, that was done in, in this room as well. And it's actually in the music video. You can see, you can see us in here working on it and everything. So, cool. yeah. All right. That's great. Can't cool. wait to see that. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's we'll, get a, we'll get a link for that and supply yeah. that. To people. Very yeah. cool. 
<laughs> yeah, I can relate. That sounds like my weekend fun. Crocs and socks and kayaks. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. We don't even care. Fishing. We're having a we're, we're having the greatest time, man. And it's like, you know. And then now one of my best friends like literally bought the house directly across the street from me. So it's like we hang out every day. And it's uh, we we are big Spring Hill fans, and you'll see that on Friday. That's so. awesome. That's awesome. Actually, yeah. I have a good friend that lives right down the street from you at the very, oh, really? very beginning of your street. This is a great neighborhood. Yeah. We love it out here. Yeah. Awesome. Um, The single Memphis Made Fire put out a few years ago in 2017 on Virus. Did you think about that song? Does that have a new meaning to you now that it did then? Man, we were definitely like, before COVID conversations were really serious, um, we were definitely making like some internet jokes about it being like, see, we called it, you know? Um, Yeah. Obviously, it's a metaphorical virus in the song right. uh, just talking about whatever it is in your life that uh, might be poisonous that um you need to rid yourself of to be able to move on and grow and become the best version of yourself possible but um but yeah man as soon as this whole thing like as soon as the no- news even like started talking about it we got tagged in all this stuff on the internet like oh man <laughs> they were right all along uh um, yeah but yeah, yeah. Vi- virus that was a fun one that music video was really fun too i got to kill a i got to kill a zombie <laughs> do the uh, yeah we, where is we, the we rest do. of the band located roughly so i mean are you guys all in tennessee area or all of us but our drummer our drummer lives in um orlando and uh we've got you know we're just a four piece at this point so it's me kellen and Corey um are all here in but we're very in very different areas i'm in spring hill kellen's in brentwood and Corey lives on a horse farm way north nashville um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, we're, we're pretty spread out, but we, we see each other a good bit. So, um, what you were saying, the, the music you've created there, um, it stands up. It's, it's not uh, real different from the other music you have. It, it, it isn't like, oh, well that was done in his house. Clearly, you know, yeah, no way, man. I mean, so, I mean, everybody's working in the box these days, you yeah. know, everybody. So yeah. it's like, you, you would never know, but what does help is having a well-treated room. I know Rob really liked the way that I treated the room. Um, and having a creative space that feels separate from the rest of the house. It really feels like when I step into this room, I'm stepping into a different place. You know, having the booth um, and just, it just feels good. It just feels good and it sounds yeah. good. And that is so important. So, yeah. 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 Some of the studio work I had done with, a friend we had a studio and we were always concerned about that first uh perception when you walked in the room it had yeah. to walk you had to walk into a completely different space yeah and you yeah. know not a dirty space not a spaghetti factor filled wa- pile of wires mm-hmm. you know a neat clean space that's kind of open that you can walk into and be a part of and yeah. bring something along and bring your stuff along and put it down and you not know, feel like you're cluttered when i was in orlando um a few months six or seven months ago whatever it was I decided to swing by Elvis Basquette's studio and mm. uh, I've always been a huge fan of his work, but there's not a whole lot of like uh, pictures and videos of his studio f- that float around and just walking into that space, man, I have been, I've never felt so at home instantly the way that, I mean, he's got, it's, it's insane. His space is insane, but um, just the vibe that he's created in there, it makes you feel like you could come in. You're like, all right, I want to do a record here. I could spend two months in this room all day, every day and feel amazing about it. And I wanted to create something, you know, obviously on a smaller scale, but something like that here uh, where I would want to be all the time. And even if I'm not recording or writing, I'm in here usually as an office as well, just mm-hmm. working um, on, on whatever. So it's, um, it's, it is great, man. It's great. Yeah. Um, so we've talked about it a little bit. Is there anything in particular about how COVID-19 has really changed? Uh, the way you work or the outlook on music at the future, um, you know, I release that, of content. Yeah. I mean, I think that, um, I think that art has never been more important. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. and I think that, you know, like not being able to perform and tour is a bummer, but I also think that people are still consuming music and they still need music. People will always need music, especially in a time like this, when you feel isolated when you feel alone when you feel confused when you feel sad it's like you need a song to remind you that you're not alone and and to remind you that you're human you know to say like oh there's Mm -hmm. someone else that's experiencing these same emotions and that's why music is so powerful and um so yeah i think that um 
people's attention spans are probably a little shorter these days because <laughs> Yeah. Um, artists, it seems are, are releasing music a little bit faster. So kind of, you can kind of be like, all right, this is my favorite record. And then tomorrow <clears throat> a new record comes out. Oh, this is my favorite record. So I think that it might be important to be releasing music faster than ever before uh, from an artist perspective, especially cause we can't tour. Um, but I mm-hmm. don't think that, um, you know, I was on a podcast last week and they're like, do you think that like music and art, do you think it still matters as much? And I'm like, yeah, I think it matters even more now. And I think people are consuming it at a rapid rate so um as long as we can be creative with how we're presenting our music to whoever chooses to listen to it i think that there still is very much a market for this forever so yeah i years ago you know in the beginning of rock or whatever it was or pop music it was releasing singles right so you release singles you didn't tour as much but you release singles and maybe that's part of it i think so yeah instead of dropping an album i mean why not just you know, drop a song a month for 12 months. It's mm-hmm. like, you know, mm-hmm. it just always kind of grabbing people's attention. I think that, you know, hip hop's been doing that for a while now too. And it's like, that just, it just seems like a, a smarter way to make sure that everything you create gets eyes on it because, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, these days we'll put out a record and you can't even go to radio with more than three songs for an album cycle. It's like, all right, well you, go to radio and then there's a while before you're on the charts a couple months and then you get on the charts and you're working your way up to the top for a couple months and then you get up to the top and then now you've had a song in the top 10 and now it has a longevity of eight to 10 more months just like with a lot of spins and so you're a year in with only one single having gone to radio and then all of a sudden you you know you do it again and then it's time to do a new record you've got eight or nine or ten other songs that never had any attention because they weren't on a spotify playlist or you know on a station and so uh, Mm -hmm. yeah i think that Putting out singles is probably going to be the way of the future. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think at some point we'll get, we'll get past this. Right. And there will be new energy to see art and creativity and live music, you know? Absolutely. People won't take it for granted. Um, Right. You know, and I, but I also think there's two sides of that. I think that the, the, the market could be flooded. I think everyone who hasn't been on tour is like all going to tour again at the same time. Like, Hit it right. one time. <laughs> okay, go. <laughs> Literally every venue is booked. You could like you'd walk through the front door and there's, you know, like someone playing on their porch. It's like, yeah, I think it, it'll be a, it'll be a pretty crazy time when, when they say all systems go. Yeah. And, and how, and as far as collaborating with the rest of the people in the band too, how is this, change that i mean do you were you already doing kind of remote collaboration already or is this some so luckily for us our entire career um kellen and i have never written together in the same room ever wow. there's only two you know kellen and i are the only writers in the band he's always written everything instrumentally and i've always written everything for top line and uh so i for the last 11 years have just been getting a demo from him and writing vocals over it. And if we needed to change something instrumentally to, to you know, cater to the vocal, then we will. But, um, but this is how we've always done it. So, uh, cool. so yeah, it hasn't been, hasn't been an issue. Good. Awesome. And then in closing, I think we already have covered this, but is there anything that you would like to, uh, kind of promote our upcoming projects, the Memphis may fire album, is there a due date or a, a release date on a new song? or just watch for it in the future and anything else that you have going on? Not even close. Uh, I mean, we're, we're just very much at the beginning stages of writing. Um, and then we'll, you know, d- decide where to go from there. But, um, yeah, I think it'll be a while. It'll be probably a year before a new Memphis record were to come out. Um, who knows? I mean, we might drop a single before then, but, uh, there's no talks of that yet. You know, this is all brand new. We literally just, just signed this new record deal. So, um, but I mean, in the meantime, you can listen to South on 65 on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And yeah, I've got a single, I've got a, you know, a solo project for CCM radio and my singles currently at radio. It's called no hold on me. You probably already heard it at the beginning of this. And, uh, yeah, I mean, if you, uh, if you listen to Christian contemporary radio, I think you'll love it. I'm, uh, really excited about that project. So yeah. Cool. We'll yeah. Play, it's a great song. We'll play, uh, we'll play a little bit of that on the, on the outro too. Cool. Great. So people could check it out. Mm-hmm big barbecue guy as well. I love barbecue. I'm pretty heavily into barbecue. And so, um, we talk about that all the time as well. Great relationship. What kind of grill do you have a pellet grill? I have a lot of pellet grills. Yeah. I have, <laughs> oh, really? I have six Traegers. Really? So you got a pellet smoker probably. It's they're all smokers. Pellet- yeah. They're, they're all, they're all smokers, but you know, like with the new pro series, uh, with Traeger, all their 2019 models and 2020 models, um, they all go to 500 degrees. So they're, they're all, they're, they double as both. 
Wow. Yeah. So we've gotten ridiculously into that. And uh, next month, Traeger is flying me to Florida for that fishing trip. I'm telling you guys about that. Oh, awesome. Earlier. Um, awesome. Yeah. So they're, they're fly, they're, they're shipping two grills down there and they're flying me down there to go out on this like giant, like, like half yacht, essentially fish for swordfish, catch one. We're going to have a Traeger on the boat. We're going to prepare it, prepare it, cook it on the boat and eat it all out at sea and man. do a video of the whole thing. That's cool. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. That'd be very cool, man. I'm excited about it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Very cool. Pretty stoked. Yeah. Man. Yeah. You're living the life. Yeah. Dude. As long as I don't catch this, whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Going on in, in, in Florida. Cause people are crazy down there, man. Uh, um, it's like, yeah. and there's, there's, I saw this thing today. It's like a, a mosquito, like this crazy mosquito disease going on specifically in the Florida Keys where I'm going. I'm like, great. Oh no, really? Oh man. Yeah. That's not murder hornets, right? No, Remember it's seeing not the, murder yeah. hornets, man. It is something else, but it is, uh, <laughs> I'm not excited about it. So yeah, well, uh, yeah, safe travels on that. Mask up. Yeah, I will. I might even wear a turtleneck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, turtle are turtlenecks are going to make a comeback, I think. So, Maddie, to just keep up on on you and and what you're doing, uh, how should people follow you through Instagram, Facebook? What what what's the best platform or all of them? Yeah, um, you know. Pretty much anywhere on the internet you can find me other than TikTok. I don't do any of that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you can find me on Facebook, uh, on Instagram. It's, you know, just ma search Maddie Mullins and uh, and you'll find it. Great. Awesome. Well, thanks for being with us, Maddie. It was great talking to you. Um, all the best to you. Stay in touch. And uh, happy to have you on the podcast and, and in the Orlex family. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. Very honored. Thank you. And I'll hope we'll see you in Spring Hill. Thanks again for listening to Creative Spaces. Before we go, please make sure you head over to Orlex.com where you'll find a ton of information about making the right choices when it comes to acoustical treatment and sound isolation for your creative space. You can also purchase Orlex products on our site as well as visit your favorite Orlex dealer. And please follow Orlex on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube.